So the town of Queen Creek, which is located outside of Phoenix, created its own police department two years ago. This is its first homicide investigation. So I'd like to welcome in Robert Anglin, investigative reporter with the Arizona Republic, the publication uh, which made a public records request for that police report. Uh, Robert, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. First of all, making that public or making that request for the information, was it difficult? How long did it take uh, to receive that? It's not difficult to ask for information. What's difficult is sometimes getting it. But there's a there's two kind of tracks going on with this investigation. One involves the homicide, and the other involves the beating deaths, or, or pardon me, the beatings of by this gang known as the Gilbert Goons, which was unheard of um, until we began piecing the pieces to, of, of this these attacks together and making it clear that this gang was in fact tied to the murder of Preston Lord. Members of the gang had been, um, now have been arrested in other attacks, but the gang was operating almost unchecked out of another community near Queen Creek called Gilbert. And getting information from that department has proven to be akin to pulling teeth. So Robert, talk about why are these arrests coming now? Why did it take months? Was it just a matter of building the case? Is it because we know there, there may have been this attempt to, to try to cover up tracks? What all is going on? I don't, I don't think any attempts to cover up uh, the, the kids' involvement in, in the homicide um, that are alleged had any bearing on the homicide case itself. But again, when I talk about two separate tracks, th there were beatings going on for months, more than a year, actually. And after the death, Preston Lord's death became the catalyst for why we began looking into those attacks. We heard right away that people were, that the, some of the same kids who were involved in his beating death had been involved in these other attacks. And what unfolded was a series of attacks that occurred at shopping malls, fast food restaurants, house parties, parks, by a gang of affluent teenagers. And, and they, would, they would randomly attack kids in gang style attacks. And these are not fist fights. These are not some, some old school fist to cuff. These are, these are group attacks. They're swift, sudden, and, and very brutal. They've used weapons. They've put kids in the hospital. They've cracked open skulls. Um, they are just about as bad as you can believe. And those beatings, while known to police, had never been linked to the gang itself. And the police had failed to investigate over and over again. And, and by that, I mean the Gilbert police. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Queen Creek police was working on the homicide investigation and putting together a case in relatively short order. Yeah. So we know that this case, when it relates to the homicide, uh, appears to be moving forward. But Robert, I, I would like to, to go back to those other beatings, the ones that happened in Gilbert, is there going to be any uh, type of culpability there? Are there any charges uh, in related to the victims uh, of those beatings? Yes. Um, after we reported in December, police began reopening cases that had been closed or been put on hold. And in January, they began arresting people tied to these beatings. And now the... Um, They've arrested in a in a small percentage of the beating videos that we know exist. They they have not arrested all the individuals who are in those in those videos being seen thumping on people and and the beatings again. They use weapons. They stomp. They they beat. They use brass knuckles. They kick. It's it's just about as as awful as you can imagine. Um, many times the the victims don't have time to respond. And as you watch these things. The, what, what's striking is the swiftness and suddenness of them. Um, yeah. Gilbert, those attacks, by the way, happen not just in Gilbert. We call that the nexus of the attacks. Mm -hmm. They also happen in a, in a community called Mesa and in, in Pinal County and another community called Chandler. And if and I'm understanding, and Robert, you said that getting information in relation to the beatings was what was like pulling teeth. Talk a little bit more about that. We have, since December, been demanding records from the Gilbert Police Department. To say they're coming in at a snail's pace would be an exaggeration. Um, 
we've, we've asked for specific records tied to the beatings, tied to what police knew about the beatings. Um, all of this was set in motion when the police chief suggested um, that the police couldn't put these these cases together initially because the victims weren't able to identify their attackers. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.